the kind of position or the opinion of the crowd completely and utterly changed. And it went from, yeah, protect your wife, to, hey, foreigners can't hit us Chinese people. Oh, 86, in jail. <laughs> So foreigners in China are often lauded as exotic, you know, uh, bringers of new information. They're like seen as the outsiders that are very, very interesting to the average person because China is a pretty homogenous society, right? Now, oftentimes you can see the general opinion of foreigners in like conversations with taxi drivers. And if you get in a taxi in China, they'll often ask you, well, pretty much every time we'll ask you where you're from. Basically, you might get a little bit of a big head because you'll think that Chinese people absolutely love people from your country because they'll say things like, wow, Americans are so good. They're way better than us Chinese because they're so rich. Oh, you're from Germany. Hitler was a good man. They've said this. I'm serious. And all these kind of generalizations about your country, which are usually positive, but it's a slippery slope because actually, if there's an altercation or something happens uh, where it's China against another country or China against the rest of the world, then everything can turn on you. And I've wanted to tell this story for a really long time. I wanted to make a proper video about how I went to jail in China over a woman. Guys, this literally, I'm not even joking, this entire meal, which is this delicious pork belly and rice and vegetables and you have pork blood soup, might seem unappetizing to you, but I love this stuff. This is like three US dollars. So it was uh, Valentine's Day, but it was Chinese Valentine's Day. Am I right, person behind the camera? So it's Chinese Valentine's Day, and uh, I was out with my wife. We went out to eat some Japanese food, actually. And uh, we got into a taxi. Taxi driver was a normal countryside taxi dude. And uh, we actually had forgotten to bring cash. We explained to him, hey, stop at our house real quick. My wife's gonna go grab her purse. Then we'll continue on to the next destination. 200 meters, yeah, it was like 200 meter tax, taxi ride. So he goes, okay, he, he agrees to all these terms. And basically, when he goes to the house, he stops the meter and he's like, yeah, just pay and get out. And I was like, well, I already told you. We have to go get the money first. We gotta go get my wife's purse. So my wife gets out of the car and she goes to walk into the apartment complex and he goes, give me money. And he, he starts swearing and screaming at us. I'm like, you need to calm down. And I wanted to go protect my wife because he, he just got out of the car. So I follow him and he stops my wife. I believe he physically touched you, right? Grabbed you or something and turns you around. And he goes, give me my effing money. Screaming at my wife. And uh, I get, furious obviously but I look at Vivi and she looks like the fury of hell like had just been bestowed upon her like Satan's spirit came into her eyes and she whipped out her camera well, it was my camera right and he started filming him right and you go I dare you to say that again because what he just said before that was I'm gonna beat the hell out of you I'm gonna I'm gonna kill you then he said that well that was, you know, I'll, I'll beat you to death is what he said to my wife so Right before I jump in, she whips out the camera and starts filming him. She goes, say that again to the camera. And he says it, he says it again, he repeats himself. He says, I'm gonna beat you to death. And he slaps my wife in the face and slaps the camera out of her hand. And I, I don't, obviously I know what happened to me. Obviously I got very angry. So I did what any normal man would do if his wife had just been struck by a man and I punched him in the face. I don't want to, to make this sound worse than it actually is, but I have to be totally honest, and it was a very strong punch. And the man's face was very soft. Uh, I feel like he had not received the nutrition he should have as a child because it literally, he melted into the ground like a, like a pile of ooze after I hit him. I've never been in a situation where I hit someone and they literally just 
they collapse into a pile. So he's laying there. And it, as all this is going on, the most interesting thing is, this is something that's very Chinese. If something happens, like a car accident, or people get into a fight, or there's an argument, or the cops show up somewhere, people will make a big uh, kind of scene. They'll, they'll look at, they'll be onlookers, and they'll take videos of it, and uh, kind of be like this, ab this uh, silent crowd in the background. And this happened when you know we were arguing with a taxi driver, and of course created a, a massive crowd when I hit him. So the entire crowd, the entire time, was cheering on my wife. They were basically, am I right? They were like, yeah, like you can't hit a woman, mess this guy up, right? And then as soon as I hit the hit the dude, they were actually they began to cheer even more. They're like, hell yeah, like finally got some justice. But within, I would say. 30 seconds of me hitting the taxi driver, the kind of position or the opinion of the crowd completely and utterly changed. And it went from, yeah, protect your wife, to, hey, foreigners can't hit us Chinese people. And it was scary, and I know what kind of situation this was about to turn into, because mob violence and mob mentality is very common in mainland China. So I'm like, shit, like, we need to, we need to sort this out. So, we went into the apartment complex, which is actually like government property. And the security guards are obviously on my side. They're like, you need to stay back. You, need, you guys need to get out of here before the crowd turns on you. Because people have been beaten to death over stuff like this. So long story short, the cops show up. And we all get into the cop car. Vivi was in there. Uh, the dude was in the cop car. I was in the cop car. And then uh, her parents showed up as well. And on the way to the police station, my brain is racking. I'm like, what is actually going to, what's going to transpire here? What's going to come out of this? And although you may think I was in the right in this situation, this is how I ended up in a Chinese police station holding cell. I had never seen like Chinese police officers like interacting with each other, but I feel like they could have their own TV show. They all had their own like little personalities and stuff and they're all eating like shrimp. I remember they're eating like shrimp kanji or something. And uh, I got to see, I got to see the inner workings of a Chinese police station in jail because, at least the people they just caught, because, uh, you know, they would bring a criminal in, and they would kind of make them confess to what they did and get all their information, and then uh, I'd be able to listen in on these conversations. So here I was, like next to all these like criminals, basically, and everyone that wasn't local that committed a crime, they, they were shit. Like they. If they found out you're from like a different town or a different province, man, your punishment wasn't light. And the, the most common thing that I saw people going in there was for like putting illegal stickers on the walls. Mm -hmm. So basically when you walk around on the walls in China, they'll have like, uh, like stickers that will say, um, you can buy fake receipts here, or you can buy counterfeit this or whatever, like illegal stuff. And the people that get sent out to put those stickers up, they're not really criminals. I mean, they're just kids getting paid to do stuff. but. Man, they beat the shit out of you. They were like, hang him. They, they, they use this word, hang him. They basically take the dude and they brought him upstairs and they hang him by his hands and they just beat the frick out of him with like a metal rod. And you hear him screaming and stuff up there because he won't admit to what he did. There was other people that were, uh, that were caught for prostitution and stuff. Long story short, me and Vivi are in there and I'm like shit myself because I'm like, what the hell did I do wrong? But I'm listening to the conversation and the guy claims that he was in the right. And the police officers ended up kind of taking his side because I was a foreigner that drew blood yeah, and punched the dude. Yeah, here's the thing. That dude even say like, you tie him up, I beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> that was the story. But the thing is, the police not going to believe him. Right. But the problem is you draw blood. So that's why it's the bad, bad case. I said, because that dude hurt me. But the problem is that dude is too weak to the point that I didn't have any mark. So, but he had blood. So in that scenario, he's way more like severe. Right. So, but it's really with the, like a foreigner. So they also It becomes don't, a big deal. Yeah, so they don't want to. Normally they will let us go. Of course, if, nothing if would are, happen. If you were Chinese, they will just let right. you go. But, um, and he said like, even if, he, <laughs> even the cop told me that if you are not a foreigner, after they get out, you can beat the crap out of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm allowed to because yeah. the guy 
was such a pain in the ass. Yeah. They were like, then, Ooh, this taxi driver guy. Yeah, and the problem is because you are a foreigner, they don't, actually the cop was saying like they don't want to mark anything on you. Right. So at the end of the day, we need to pay for his uh, me medical bill. Yeah, it was so, like a thousand dollars. Which is okay. Right. He was claiming that he wants one price. Yeah, there. he wanted like like twenty thousand U.S. dollars yeah. or something, fifteen thousand. Yeah, and then my uncle showed up, said like, I will give you the money, but if you get the money, you're not gonna able to have this time to spend. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> her uncle shows up out of nowhere. I don't know what this guy does, by the way, <laughs> but he basically drops some names. And this guy's taxi driver friends show up to support him in the police station, and they all f***ing <laughs> bolt. They all run away. And I'm like, what the f*** <laughs> did your, your uncle say? Anyways, let's go back to the story. Because he thinking he couldn't get anything out of it, he decided to like inject all the ice <laughs> yeah. for him so that we can pay more. Yeah, so he wanted to take advantage. He's like, give me the works. And they strap up all these bags of IVs at the hospital to him. Yeah. And he's puking his guts outside yeah. because he's so sick from all this random medicine. <laughs> he got antibiotics and stuff. Yeah, all the thing. My dad said like he literally inject like more than four or five IVs <laughs> in the same time. He's puking everywhere. <laughs> anyway, the main point I was trying to prove is like, First of all, the person, if they get a little bit injured, they will over-exaggerate right. or hurt, try to scam the crap out of you. They try to get the get as many as help as they can. Right. If you are a foreigner alone, stay away from this situation right. as fast as you can. Not only will you get potentially get scammed for a lot of money, but also, legally, very bad consequences. Look they at Wendell Brown. They can support you. They, even the cops, like they, you know, they will ask for the crowd. Right. For everything. It's not everything is not exactly run like how the Western country does. Right. The lucky thing is because I'm the local there, I have the connection. So at that's the not end always going to be the case. Yeah, but that's not everyone is not that lucky. At the end of the day, like they end up like making me sign a thing. It's like I beat him up right. and I draw the blood <laughs> on him. Which everyone know that's not gonna be the truth. Right. But that's how we keep him stay out of uh, the record. Was saying like he hurting Chinese people or blah blah, right. blah all those kind of thing. So one suggestion, seriously, really serious suggestion. If you see any crowd, if you saw any person get hurt, I'm not suggesting you try to be a bad foreigner that like not helping. Stay away from any do not help, trouble. Do not help people if they're hurt because they will potentially use you to get money. And number two, avoid any situation where you could potentially get in a fight. Because look at Wendell Brown, the NFL player. Defended himself and his girlfriend at the bar. No one got hurt. Four years in jail. If you see any crowd start to have... It, 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 if you see anything start to have a crowd, stay away. Right. Stay away. Run the heck out of there. <laughs> Seriously. And I know the fa fact thing is like the Chinese people are saying like you don't teach foreigners to do that. That's so it's such an insult for our China and blah blah those kind of thing. But that's the truth. If you're trying to come here, stay away from any trouble, any crowd, because probably you will be the it'll, target. It'll turn on. Like you. I don't want to just like shit on my country but that is the truth it's mob mentality and like just to for a really bad example to kind of finish this off i mean look at the pakistani guy with his chinese girlfriend if he had gotten out of there and didn't argue with the dude that was angry at him for being with a chinese girl he would have be, he'd be alive right now but it's he had to continue arguing and get in a fight and then he ended up dying getting stabbed so that's i mean that's just what happens so avoid any altercation seriously and if you can learn anything from my story it's Either make local connections or just don't get in trouble. Don't don't punch little tiny taxi drivers. <laughs> <laughs> so even me and him's joke is like, if you want to punch, you need to be tiny enough. <laughs> I, every time I've gotten in a fight in Asia, it's always been with t very tiny old men. I'm sorry, guys. They're like chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, I think it's the attitude problem. Anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go downstairs, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and patreon.com slash 86 for all the stuff that we can't talk about because you know what? There's a lot of stuff. Oh, my. oh are you going to scam me? I just helped you. Um, patreon.com.
like uh, the, the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Well, all my money's yours anyway. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Loudy6 for more videos and behind the scenes of the stuff we can't really talk about because eh, we've created this little tight-knit community where everyone can uh, get the scoop on everything that really happens in our lives as well. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much, Loud Winners, and I'll catch you on the next one.